for uh, being here with us, John. Thanks Appreciate for having me. Um, congratulations on your first feature debut. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, yeah. It premiered at Sundance. Yeah. It won the Grand Jury Prize as yes, well, right? Yes, it did, yeah. For dramatic. So how, how was the Sundance experience? like? Um, well, yeah, I mean, Sundance is something that's, as a, even as a young Scottish boy, I sort of this weird dream world that I would never get to or something. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, to be there and then to, to pick up an award, yeah, it was very surreal. And then to be there with a Western, at what's essentially one of the homes of Westerns, isn't it? This Sundance yeah. being from Sundance mm -hmm. and Butch Cassidy and all that, That's and true. Robert Redford. And <laughs> so, yeah, no, it was, it was great. Yeah. How are you taking in the whole experience with the press and the touring? And yeah, I mean, I'd, I was involved in a, in, a, in a band in my, when I was in my 20s, mm -hmm. and we did a bit of this. So, so it's kind of, yeah, 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 a wee bit. I, I, we, we did tours and we did press, so kind of, yeah. You're used to it, Got but it. on a different, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I yeah, they were pretty easy on us in the band. This is much more hardcore. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, or maybe we just said no to a lot of stuff back then. <laughs> nah, we're not doing that. So, uh, All right. Yeah. Well, um, I really enjoyed Slow West. Um, I saw it last week uh, at a screening. And um, one thing that uh, really stood out to me was the cinematography. Mm. It was stunning. Yes. Um, so when you were um, going shot by shot, how yeah. did you, uh, what did you think about when, you know, doing each shot mm. and making each shot? Um, well, the fortunate thing about writing and directing mm -hmm. is that, I wrote sort of almost by playing the film in my head, so okay. um, it's kind of I felt like the script was already quite visual, and then um, and then I storyboarded thoroughly. It took about a month, but oh. <laughs> each day drawing, uh, um, yeah, quite quite thorough stro storyboarding really. Um, I just wanted to uh, some of the scenes. Just I, I knew that the way I wanted to shoot them, they'd have to come from a storyboard kind of construction because mm -hmm. there's a lot of static shots and details. And yeah. so um, when it came to shooting, I mean, uh, Robbie Ryan, who's a cameraman, mm -hmm. um, I'd worked with on a short film before, and we had we had a rapport and we yeah. we got on well. So I kind of trusted Robbie and his lighting team just to to make it look absolutely fantastic, and then. It was just a case of, you know, kind of looking at the storyboards, really, not not going too far from them, actually, as mm -hmm. far as composition and setup. Okay. Um, yeah, so there wasn't. It took a lot of because we were, because we had so many shots to do each day, it sort of made that manageable, you know, without going. Ah, oh, so where will we put the camera? It was very mm -hmm. much like we need this. It needs to go here. Yeah, you, know? you already knew so, ahead of time. That yeah. What you so exactly so that's the way it was built. I think. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you decided to film in Scotland and New Zealand instead of Colorado. Yes. Correct. So um, why did you decide to do that? Um, I think the first thing that happened was I'd finished the script and Michael's schedule is full on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we're just looking at his schedule and all the other, you know, elements. They all fell into place maybe November, December to shoot. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, it was summer in New Zealand versus winter in Colorado, right, and okay. uh, um, it's a completely outdoor film, mm -hmm. so it just it felt at least worth a look in New Zealand. So I went down there and recce'd, and um, it was quite amazing because because every director I think or writer director wants to shoot where it's set, you know, that's mm -hmm. like, and everything else is a compromise and. Um, but when I went down there and started seeing the locations that were exactly like I'd written, like a sort of a crack in a rock that a buffalo skeleton could get jammed in, and a, and and you know, or a yeah. silver birch forest that was near a plane, or you know, so um, probably um, which would be more of a struggle in maybe Colorado because the distance and the size that um, it, it became okay. This is this is doable, okay. and I, I really you know I double check the plants and the trees and I really wanted everything to be as authentic as to Colorado as possible and mm -hmm. luckily kind of all was um, and then I wanted to really hope the audience would forget it was New Zealand and, was, <laughs> and but they've not <laughs> like they it says New Zealand at the start of the film and yeah. but then some people have said to me 
you know, it gives it a kind of adds to the magic realism off kilterness of it because mm -hmm. it's not, you know, you know, there's something that's not quite right or it's not quite American or it's a bit fairy tale yeah. and dreamlike. So mm -hmm. I kind of I didn't quite realize that would happen, but that has as well. So it's good. It was very artsy. I got that that take <laughs> on it, and I re yeah. that's why I guess yeah. I enjoyed it more because you uh, said that you wanted to avoid the Western cliches. Yeah. And yeah. make it more of like a road, uh, European road movie. Yes, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, that was definitely the idea from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you were um, writing the story, yeah. how, how did you come up with the idea, the take on it that you, that you have? Mm -hmm. I think it was, I used to travel around America a lot when I was younger. I was sort of, I was just, I was drawn to it, maybe through my love of cinema and American cinema, perhaps. But yeah, and then I sort of became drawn to just the exploring the country here. And um, so Jay's trip, a sort of tourist view of America mm -hmm. seemed to sort of, I could see a sort of truth in that of myself and um, a wide-eyed wonder of the, the place. And then mix that with my, maybe my love of the genre of the Westerns and the, um, and then maybe there was something a bit more personal about me being 16 and fancying a girl that was <laughs> slightly out of my league or older or I don't know um, that was definitely true so that was easy to write you write what you know right <laughs> you write what you know but yeah yeah so that was the bit I knew the bit I didn't know was um, probably probably Jay was kind of what I was like when I was 16 and maybe Silas was what I wanted to be like okay. or, you know so um, uh, yeah, so that was the kind of seeds of the story and then the migration thing, not to have Americans, but to have people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, when I was traveling, people would always say to me, oh, my great-grandfather was Scottish or my grandfather was Irish. Or, so um, just to make a sort of point about that side of the birth of America. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, what was the biggest challenge that you faced when filming Slow West? Um, I th the, the weather was so on my side that that ruled that out being a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was really, I was so fortunate about the weather that I just felt like everything was going my way and it became a really good shoot and mm -hmm. I, I was really lucky. I think the biggest challenge was possibly the horses uh. because when actors try and get a job, they say that they're great at riding horses. They're not going to say, oh, I can't ride a horse. Sorry, uh -huh. no, not for me. They say, yeah, I can ride a horse. And then you find out in the day of the shoot mm -hmm. that, you know, some of the horse riding in the film, it worked because people were maybe not supposed to be great horsemen, you know, mm -hmm. so it was a bit kind of... Um, but, yeah, that was a problem, okay. getting eight horses to stand in a row. I think, I think it's, yeah, you know, if horses were sort of in my script were galloping everywhere and running wild, then it might have been easier, but some shots were just them standing in a row, mm -hmm. and that was quite tough, but, um, yeah, it was a small problem, really, I mean, the shoot went really well. That's great. Yeah. Good, good thing that it ran smoothly. I mean, yeah. You hear some horror stories sometimes. No, so. I mean, that's <laughs> down to the, I mean, I was working, the other thing is that when they're not shooting Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or Avatar <laughs> in New Zealand, you're getting these same people for... Okay. Um, reduced costs, um, <laughs> but you're still getting their highly high. So, so the production, the costume, the um, special effects guy—they've all come from Peter from these huge really? films. So, so they're all wow. really great. That's awesome. Yeah. And you get to work with the same similar crew. Then, yeah, then was, those, yeah. Those films as well. Mm. Um, I think it was the same horse actually. That, really? That, um, <laughs> that one of the, the um, Vigo has a Lord of the Rings. So yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, so what, what is one thing that you would like audiences to take from, from the film? Yeah, that's a tough question. I think someone asked me that at Sundance, and I said mm -hmm. they're litter, because I used to work in the cinema. And <laughs> <laughs> like, I want them to take their litter away from it. No, um, um, you kind of, I guess, such a tough question because you kind of 
you want you want to get audiences in for a start. <laughs> yeah, that's your right. job. And once they're in there, you want to have them. Mm -hmm. So you want you want to just have hold of them throughout the film. I guess it's is um, that the it's the same as when I go to the cinema. I want to at least wake up the next day and remember I've been to the cinema. I remember the yeah. story and, mm -hmm. and start thinking about the story and think about it three days or, th or maybe two weeks later. You think, oh, you know. That and sticks with you. Yeah, stays yeah, with that you. it stays yeah. with you. And, you know, I've watched films that I've completely forgotten. I've watched the film an mm -hmm. hour after I've come out of the cinema. Yep. Oh, yeah, we went to see the cinema <laughs> earlier. And other films, you know, there's a film I watched before I came here called Force Majeure that's um, a Swedish film that mm -hmm. was absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, I think about it all the time. It keeps springing to my mind, so, yeah. Do you think you might take any aspects from that film and maybe use it later in something else? Well, but this was a contemporary film. I don't really like to be influenced by other contemporary films because mm -hmm. you're starting to get into rip-off territory. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it just did what it did really well. Go and see it, actually. It's really What was good. it called again? It's called Force Majeure. Okay. I'll have to look into that. Now. It's about a, an avalanche that... Um, comes a family, but it's not a, I'll spoil it by saying <laughs> okay. what it's about. There's an avalanche in it, but it's not a disaster movie. Not a disaster, okay, that's yeah. good. No. <laughs> they do too many of those. No, it's, fair, it's, it's about the opposite of a disaster okay. movie. Okay, so cool. Um, so you've worked with Michael Fassbender before. Yes. On, on a few projects. Now, how did that uh, collaborative relationship start? Um, he, I had, while I was in this band, I made a lot of the music videos, but they were very narrative-driven, crazy, short filmish, samurai, aliens, kind of paper costumes type films. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I got to know Michael's agent, and, and Michael's agent showed Michael some of these films. Mm -hmm. I think back just before he was shooting with Tarantino, and so he was already on the road to right. success. And um, he, he liked them, and then I met him one night, and he said, do you fancy doing something? So he, I'll give you sort of, he gave me one day of his time. And uh, I sh so went away and wrote a little thing about, motor I knew you liked riding his motorcycle, so mm -hmm. I wrote a, a little thing about a motorcycle career. Man on a motorcycle. Man on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And then I filmed it on my mobile phone, and because I wanted it to be very sort of gorilla, we just jumped on the back of his bike, filmed mm -hmm. in the street, no permission, no crew. <laughs> Um, and it was fun, and he, he wanted to work with me again, so I, I did a three, I wrote, I had three days with him, I wrote a, another short called Pitch Black Heist, mm -hmm. made sure that was fun, and, and well, you know, the writing, I was very conscious that, you know, if you've got people like Michael, then the writing has to be solid. Spot on, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, I, and as I did each project, we sort of, there was a bit more collaboration, you know, and I'm, I know he's interested in writing and producing, and so we'd go over the script, and, mm -hmm. you know, it wouldn't just be him turning up and, and action. So, um, and the same with Slow West. After that, it's like, okay, we'll run it through Michael's production company. He'll look at the script and give me days to, to um, read and talk about it. And, and um, yeah, so it was, it was great. Nice. Yeah. Um, how would you describe your directing style? Um, at the moment, and it might change, but I am obsessed with classical approach mm -hmm. and ec economy. So I do love Bresson and Bergman and these European cinemas of the 50s, Japanese cinemas of the 40s, Ozu. Um, uh, they're very fixed camera, deep focus, mm -hmm. and if the camera moves, it's for a reason. If someone says something, it's for a reason. <laughs> uh, and there's an economy there that, 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 you know, it's not, they're not sort of, there's not like long shots of landscapes for just the beauty of the landscape. Mm -hmm. there, there'll, there'll be a reason, you know, and I do love, I do love that about noir cinema of the 50s as well. Mm -hmm. Everything's tight and um, purposeful. So I would say that's my style that I like. I like the noir films as well. Yeah. Yeah, 40s, 50s, golden age. Oh, yeah. Basically. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one last question. Um, what advice would you give to young independent filmmakers about getting their work out there? Mm. Um, 
Do you mean work that they've already made then getting Yeah, out like there? kind of getting traction and get, yeah. you know, taking it somewhere. That's, that's the hardest part. I mean, it's any, anyone can write. If you've got a pencil and a bit of paper, you can write. Mm -hmm. um, I think, for a start, either if you don't know a great writer, write. Mm -hmm. and, make, and, and the more you write, the better you write and read scripts, and then the script's better. And then when the script's better, the film will be better. Mm -hmm. And then if the film's better, then you're giving yourself a better chance of people passing it on in word of mouth. Right. So I think it's starting with the product, like making sure you've got well written, <laughs> yeah. you know, making sure everything's a, a, as, as great as it can be at every level, especially the writing, because mm -hmm. that's free to do as well. Mm -hmm. So you can't blame money there. Um, and then it's really difficult. I mean, eventually I think things that are well written and well directed will find their way. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be very unlucky for them not to. And and then if there's ever the glimmer of opportunity, like you're in a bar and you meet someone from Film 4 or Film Company, or, mm -hmm. or you meet an actor like the way I met Michael, but it could be any actor that's got any profile. Um, if you've already got something that you've made that's of quality, you show them, you know. Yeah. And if you don't have that and you're just talking to them, then it's not really going to go, anywhere, gonna go yeah. anywhere. So, yeah, start making films. Building like that I, you repertoire. Know, and, yeah, and I had stuff yeah. that I'd made with my friends that couldn't act, and I didn't have, you know, <laughs> I edited myself on my computer, and they were clumsily shot, and I didn't have any sound man, so I just used music and um, made them silent, and you know, so you just play uh -huh. to all those strengths, and eventually, I think, you know, when when you do get a lucky break, it's not just down to luck. You can sort of say, well, it's, it is lucky, it is lucky, I met Michael, but also I was prepared, right. and then and then I I could back it up with great material when he asked to do something. So yeah, that's the key. All right. Thank I you think. so much. Thank you for Thank your you. time. I guess yeah. that's that's it. So Great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. I really no. appreciate Thank your you. time, John. Cheers. Everybody go see Slow West.